The prophecies of the Maya are shared by other ancient American cultures, including the Hopi and the Inca. Psychologist and author Alberto Violdo has spent many years with the Peruvian elders of the Andes and has been able to bring back their warning of a catastrophic time for humanity, but also the possibility of a new golden age. Humans have become a parasite on this planet. I mean, we are committing matricide. We're killing our mother who supports us. The Earth is designed to support a population of under a billion people riding bicycles to work, not seven billion driving SUVs. So the prophecies speak about this time of a culling of humanity, of a harvesting of souls, and the, of a decimation of large parts of the human race, and the beginning of a millennium of gold, of tremendous opportunity. They're very optimistic, they're very hopeful, for the planet. They're not that optimistic for humanity at large. I had a shaman tell me one time, Alberto, we're going to miss our white brother. So they, they speak about a correction and a bringing back of balance to the earth. The way that this was announced was with the wrath of our father, the sun. They speak about the drying of the high mountain lagoons, the melting of the glaciers. This was to be the beginning of an apocalyptic era. But the prophecy spoke that the world would be set right again with the new planetary alignment that would take place. 122112 prediction of the, of the Mayan calendar is predicated on the assumption that the solar system travels around the galaxy in a, in a predictable path and that on that particular date we will eclipse the center of the galaxy there will be the earth here's the sun here's the center of the milky way we'll be cut off from a direct connection to the center of the milky way galaxy and we will therefore be deprived of a certain energetic sustenance that we that we we require for for continuing to live as, as we have. What could that mean? The, the best description was given me, and, and I, I did go down to Guatemala and spend some time with Mayan shamans, and they related it to, to when you lose power in your house, for some appliances and some functions, there's no problem. When the power comes back on, the lights go back on. But there's certain things, the, the VCR clock and the microwave, that are thrown out of kilter, even for being cut off from that, that sustenance for, for just a second. And that is their, their physical explanation for the danger of this eclipse. The timing of it is, means that all of the heavens will be aligned behind us to enable us to bring forth a new time into the planet, a time of possibility, of opportunity, of healing. I attended the most recent reading of the prophecy in 1998, where they were taking the pulse of the planet to see where we were within the, the division that had been received by the Ancient Ones. And in that reading of the prophecy, they said that the upheaval and the turmoil was to be far greater than had been anticipated, with the possibility of cascading crises. Not a single crisis, but two or three that would cascade off each other bringing about dramatic corrections in the Earth's climate, making parts of the planet inhospitable and uninhabitable. I think that there is a very real possibility that around 2012 we'll see a shifting of the paradigm and more people will be coming aware of who we are, where we came from, our place in the universe, and then that would pretty much coincide with the mind prediction that we'll be into a new age. None of the ancient cultures that were able to calculate cycles of time with such incredible precision had the powerful telescopes and computers available to modern day astronomers. Instead, they used naked eye observations of the stars above over multiple lifetimes to record and chart changes in the heavens and eventually 
to plot full cycles of time. The precession of the equinoxes is the astronomical process that, uh, that underlies the, the, the Mayan calendar and, and all ancient systems of cyclical time. Uh, and perhaps I should just say a word about what the precession of the equinoxes is. Precession fundamentally is an observation of, of the heavens and an observation that at certain seasons of the year, particular markers, the, the equinoxes and the solstices, if you look at the background of stars behind the sun, you'll find that that background is very, very slowly changing. Uh, and it's changing at the rate of one degree every 72 years. Uh, and the view of um, mainstream astronomers as to why this is happening is they, ha they hypothesize, they have not proved, that there is a cyclical wobble on the axis of the Earth, rather like the wobble of a top that has been spinning fast, but, but its spin has begun to decay, and, and the, the, the poles of the top begin to make a great circle. Uh, and this is what they believe is happening with the Earth. Uh, now, because the Earth is the viewing platform from which we observe the stars, changes in orientation of that viewing platform will cause changes in the observed appearance and positions of the stars in the sky at particular times of year. Um, and, and because it's a circular wobble, uh, the whole thing is a cycle and in fact unfolds over a vast span of time. 25,920 years takes you back from the starting position of the clock back fully around the clock to the same position again. So the constellation that is rising behind the sun today in our time and for a period of roughly 2,000 years, which we're just entering into the age of Aquarius when the constellation of Aquarius has the sun, it will be 26,000 years, 25,920 years before that constellation again rises behind the sun. Ancient astrology in the Western world recognizes that there is this great cycle caused by the wobble of the Earth on its axis, and one complete wobble is 26,000 years. In the Greco-Hellenistic period, there were astrological ideas about how the sun shifts through the 12 signs of the zodiac. So you could divide the 26,000 year period into 12 periods, or 12 ages, or chapters. And this idea is a, is a fairly profound idea. It's, it's referred to as the World Age Doctrine. We can notice that in the Old Testament period, there was an obsession with the age of Aries and symbolism around the Lamb. And at the dawn of the Christian period, there became an obsession with uh, fish symbolism. And that would indicate our shift into the age of Pisces. Now, in the Western astrological tradition, we are about to uh, move out of the sign of Pisces. So there's great talk about the shifting of the age right now. We're basically at the cusp of the age of Aquarius. So this astrological doctrine has to do with our changing angular orientation to the larger, uh, the larger cosmos. The belief of many ancient cultures around the world that the precession of the equinoxes maps out changes in cycles of human consciousness has led some researchers to believe that the ancients may have understood the causes and effects of precession in a markedly different way than the generally accepted wobble theory presented by modern scientists. Walter Cruttenden of the Binary Research Institute looked back to the mythology of many of these cultures and posits a very different understanding of precession. Our research has focused on why are so many ancient cultures fascinated with this obtuse thing called precession of the equinox when it takes one a full lifetime just to notice that the stars have moved one degree. 